And that's good to hear. So, so imagine that I've, I've got a business that's growing strongly. It's one of the standouts you mentioned. What else, what other warning signs do I need to look for that maybe the deal is not going to happen? What's going to stop the deal for me? What, what are kind of some of the things that I should be wary of ahead of going into a deal that I maybe I could fix or sort out before I go into something like due diligence? What, what, what are some of those kinds of things? Yeah, there's a lot of things that can potentially kill a deal. The ones that come to mind that have um, killed deals recently for me has been uh, declining trends of the business and um, legal issues. So getting into basically battles between uh, two lawyers duking it out. And that's not something that really you can prepare for as much, but a lot of times it's difficult to get into those negotiations if your business is declining and then you don't really have as much, many options. And so that'll a lot of times kill a deal. Um, poor financials or things that get brought to the surface during due diligence that were not disclosed ahead of time can often kill deals because um, when somebody's recreating your books or doing quality of earnings or something of the, along those lines, they will find uh, discrepancies that will affect how they value the business. And if you're not willing to um, adjust your expectations uh, and change the price based on those things, then that can kill deals. Well, so also, I suppose financial... you're, trying to, you're trying to hide them as well, right? So you're going in kind of knowing you've got a few things hiding under the carpet there that you hope they won't see, or if they do see, you can brush off. Yes. It's counterintuitive because you want to try to frame the business in the best light possible. But honestly, the, the, the thing there that a lot of people miss is that when you are not disclosing certain things up front, they are, it's just prolonging, uh, it's just delaying the inevitable. You're just pushing the, kicking the can down the road at some point, there's nowhere left for it to go. And, and that is in the process of due diligence where all that is sorted out. So, um, legal concerns, uh, can, can be costly and can kind of, uh, kill you down the road. Uh, I've seen deals fail due to uh, the inability to secure a trademark, um, on the name of the, uh, certain things that they were uh, promoting products and stuff like that. Other considerations would be, uh, just what is your customer base looking like? Where are they coming from? Are they, uh, personal relationships? Is there a lot of customer concentration? that um, becomes very apparent as somebody digs deeper. Um, is there a lot of risk of churn with the business because you're in a bunch of annual contracts and those haven't come up for renewal yet and there's a lot of changes in the business and that maybe it's not hard, or it's very difficult to understand how active those accounts really are until somebody gets into due diligence and, and digs deeper. Um, but again, really a lot of this gets down to the risk, like anything that you would perceive as risk for yourself of killing the business is also most likely going to be found out by the buyer along the way, you know? So all these things I'm mentioning are, are functions of risk and whether they're identified before you go to market or during due diligence, that's kind of where things can, can fall apart because. Either, either side can get uncomfortable with the changes that are made when you first go under contract with somebody, when you first say, yes, let's buy the business for X price. And now during the due diligence period, once that changes for a variety of reasons, usually it goes the other way for the seller in the, in the wrong direction for the seller, those on those expectations can, uh, can kill a deal because they're just, you know, unwilling to, un unwilling to change uh, because of the expectations they had set when they first go into the process. And that's interesting, isn't it? It's right. It's, it all comes back to this idea of risk again. Everything's balanced on this risk profile and understanding the full risk of what the people are getting into. If you uncover more risk, you know, that's going to change your feeling in terms of the value or your confidence in it as well. So that risk balance between the buyer and seller needs to be absolutely level all the way through for the deal to happen, right? That seems to be, everybody's got to be fully aware of what the risks are. And that's got to be then matched in the price that the buyer is willing to pay ultimately. Yeah, exactly. Because if the, the return is not, if the return ends up being not as great as maybe double what you would get in, in the market or, uh, in, you know, even some of this uh, the, with the interest rates as they currently are, you know, you still are getting great interest on a savings account.